For most of Earth's history, being alive meant being hunted, and the most reliable protection wasn't speed or strength; it was armor. Even in the earliest Cambrian seas, some of the first animals wrapped themselves in shells and spines. And over hundreds of millions of years, that same idea kept coming back in stranger forms. Fish swam in plates of bone in ancient oceans. Dinosaurs dragged spiked tails and carried shields on their back. Even mammals once moved around like walking boulders. Time and time again, armor evolved in completely different animals, and then almost every time, it disappeared again. Today, we're left with just a handful of survivors: a few scaled anteaters, some nervous little burrowing mammals, and a couple of slow-crawling reptiles. In large animals, armor has become weirdly rare. So, if armor was such a powerful solution, why did evolution almost completely abandon it? And why did it only survive here, in these strangely specific creatures? If you look at the last armored animals on Earth, they feel out of place. They don't seem built for a modern, fast-paced world where predators are swift, cunning, and ruthless. From bone-crushing jaws and deadly venom to hunting in packs, modern predators have spent millions of years evolving ways to catch and break anything that can't outrun them or scare them off. Instead, they look like they belong to an older time, a time when survival followed different rules. This is a pangolin. Its body is wrapped in overlapping scales made of keratin, the same stuff as your fingernails. When it's attacked, it doesn't run or fight back. It simply curls into a ball and hopes the armor holds. Across the other side of the world, in the Americas, armadillos patrol the ground with fused bony plates under their skin, a living shell of osteoderms built for a world far more dangerous than today. In drier places, tortoises turn their own skeletons inside out. Ribs and vertebrae fused into a dome they can hide inside for hours, and in rivers and swamps, crocodiles feel like one of the last living reminders of a time when armor ruled entire ecosystems. Rows of bone cover their backs in armor as they float, letting the water carry all the weight, while they lie almost motionless, waiting for something to swim too close. On paper, these animals don't have much in common, but if you look closer, the similarities start to show. They all live slow, careful lives. Most eat low-energy food like termites or plants, things you spend all day picking at rather than sprinting after. Several spend a lot of their time with their faces in the dirt or in the water, not scanning the horizon for danger. And almost all of them live in warm parts of the world. These are tiny pockets of the modern planet where armor still has its place, but they're also echoes of a much bigger story. To understand why armor keeps appearing. And why it almost always vanishes, we have to visit the worlds that built tanks in the first place. 400 million years ago, in the Devonian, Earth's oceans were filled with creatures wrapped in bone. Some were small, flat-bodied fish that looked like living shields. Others, like Bothriolopus, had heavy, bony helmets but weak, finless tails. Awkward little creatures crawling along the sea floor. And at the top of the food chain were giants like Dunkleosteus. An apex predator with jaws so powerful they could slice through bone. Together, these armored fish were known as the placoderms, a group that included some of the earliest and most dominant vertebrate predators on Earth. And the reason they dominated the oceans isn't just that armor protected them; it also powered them. Their heavy plates anchored enormous jaw muscles, letting some placoderms deliver the first truly forceful bites in vertebrate history. This was especially important as early oceans were slow, stable ecosystems. There were no fast pursuit hunters, no fish darting around at lightning speed, just heavy-bodied fish drifting through warm, oxygen-rich water. And armor gave the placoderm strength and a way to overpower anything softer than they were. For nearly 50 million years, armor was one of evolution's most successful ideas. Until one day, the world started to change. By the late Devonian, oceans began to cool. Currents shifted, and oxygen levels began to fluctuate. And soon, more efficient predators began to evolve: animals with streamlined bodies and lighter skeletons. Predators built for speed. These early rayfin fish could accelerate faster and slip around the edges of a placoderm's armor to strike the softer, unprotected parts. In a world that was speeding up, the same weight that once protected the placoderms now made them easier to outmaneuver. But the real disaster for the placoderms didn't come from predators at all. It came from the planet itself, during the late Devonian mass extinction. 
This was a series of environmental changes, from collapsing reefs, dying coastal zones, and plummeting oxygen levels, which wiped out more than half of all marine life on Earth. And one of the most affected groups were the placoderms, who vanished completely. And just like that, the first great age of armour ended. But evolution wasn't done with the idea. Not even close. Because once ecosystems stabilised again, armour returned. The Devonian oceans gave way to a very different planet. One ruled by reptiles, rising forests, and the first true dinosaurs. By the Jurassic, those forests had spread across the continents, and both predators and plant eaters had grown enormous. Many herbivores were now too big to vanish into cover, but not fast enough to simply outrun what hunted them. So evolution carved out a new kind of tank, the Stegosaurus. Their backs rose into tall, bony plates, structures that likely served multiple roles from display and defense, and it was even theorized to help with thermoregulation. And behind them, a deadly weapon made of bony spikes, known as the Thagomizer. Fossil evidence showed that these spikes were strong enough to puncture flesh, and even fracture bone. In one case, researchers found an Allosaurus vertebrae with a puncture wound consistent with a Stegosaurus spike, evidence that getting too close could be catastrophic. So, Stegosaurs weren't fast, and they weren't agile, but in dense forests where threats suddenly appeared at close range, Armour gave its bearers a way to survive a direct confrontation against even the most persistent of predators. Then the Cretaceous arrived, and evolution doubled down. Ankylosaurs perfected armour in a way that no land animal ever has. Their entire bodies fused into a lattice of interlocking plates, their skulls became helmets, and the ends of their tails transformed into a literal bone mace. This was armour pushed to the extreme. See, the Cretaceous gave armoured animals everything they needed to truly thrive. Warm climates, lush plant life, huge herbivores and equally huge hunters. Which is why armour didn't just survive, it flourished. Long enough for one armoured giant to stand face to face with one of the most powerful predators in Earth's history, Tyrannosaurus rex. And the unbelievable part is that if an adult Ankylosaur stood its ground, T-Rex may not have won. But nothing in evolution is permanent. At the end of the Cretaceous, with the asteroid impact and the environmental chaos that followed, which reshaped global climates and entire ecosystems, large, slow-moving animals included nearly every armoured giant were the first to fall. And with that, the golden age of armour came to an end. But armour itself did not completely disappear. It simply retreated into the few corners of the world where its rules still worked. In the world after the dinosaurs, the survivors were mostly small, agile, warm-blooded mammals. They stayed light, many covered themselves in fur and hidden burrows, and for a while, speed and stealth were enough. But as millions of years passed, some of those tiny mammals did what mammals always do. When ecosystems stabilise and food is reliable, they got bigger. And as they grew, they drifted into a dangerous middle ground, where they were too big to vanish into the grass or retreat down a narrow burrow, but too small to simply stare down a predator the way a modern elephant or rhino can. Biologists sometimes call this the danger zone, where they're big enough to be seen, but too small to fight back, and often not quite fast enough to outrun what's chasing you. And when researchers looked across hundreds of modern species, they found something striking. In that middle weight range, especially in open habitats like grasslands and savannas, most species evolved some kind of specialised defence, whether it was spines, armour, camouflage, or even becoming predators themselves. And they hypothesised that it was in this range where most animals faced the environmental pressures that pushed them towards developing armour. And during this period, some small plant-eating mammals began to grow bony plates in their skin. At first, they were modest, small digging animals with a flexible shell the early ancestors of armadillos today. They lived exactly the kind of life that favours armour, with their heads down, often foraging in open country, where there was an abundance of food, but also an equally abundant array of predators. So evolution took the same deal it had accepted many times before. They traded their mobility for safety, putting on heavier and heavier armour to protect them from onlooking predators. By the Pliocene, those armoured herbivores gave rise to glyptodonts, half-ton giants that looked like a walking boulder. Their backs were covered by a solid dome of bone, and their tails were sheathed in rings of armour. They shared their ecosystems with some of the most terrifying predators mammals have ever produced. Sabre-toothed cats, giant bears, oversized jaguars and wolves. And yet, they thrived. 
Like the ankylosaurs before them, they turned a slow, heavily armoured lifestyle into a winning strategy in their corner of the world. And they didn't disappear because that strategy failed. They again disappeared when the world around them changed. As climates shifted and Ice Age ecosystems collapsed, the environments that let Arma thrive vanished with them. But the rules that created it never really went away. In fact, they're still written into the lives of their last descendants today. So what do all these armoured creatures actually tell us? Because if you strip away the names and the fossils, the same pattern keeps showing up again and again. Armour appears in worlds which follow a set of rules. The first is energy. See, armour is expensive. It takes minerals, time, and they add a lot of weight to carry around. It only makes sense when there is an abundance of food everywhere so you don't have to travel far and you can afford the extra weight. It also explains why armour rarely evolves in cold, harsh climates as most animals will choose to grow fur rather than plates of bone because most animals can't afford both. Second, you're stuck in the danger zone of body size. Because armour doesn't evolve in just any animal, it keeps showing up in species that sit in a vulnerable middle ground, large enough to be worth hunting, but still exposed to the dominant predators of their world. In mammals today, that window sits around a few kilos, while in the age of dinosaurs, it's scaled up because the predators did too. And when you look at the animals that still carry armour today, almost all of them fall into that same vulnerable middle ground. And finally, armor only really pays off in a certain kind of fight. It's most effective when attacks have rapid encounters, such as a lunge from cover or a single bite, where if you manage to curl up or bunker down and make those first few bites painful or awkward, most predators will move on as there are far easier meals they can go for. But once predators shift to endurance or using tools and pack hunting, surviving the first hit stops being enough. And instead, the safer strategy becomes don't get caught at all. Once you understand those rules, the last armoured animals on Earth stop feeling strange and instead start feeling inevitable. Many of them are insectivores spending much of their time with their faces in the soil, not watching for predators until it's almost too late. Most of them fall into a vulnerable middle ground of body size, especially in open or semi-open habitats, where you're constantly exposed and almost without exception, they cluster in warmer parts of the world. So that leaves us with one question. If evolution keeps rediscovering armor over and over again, could a new age of armor ever return? Will we ever see armored titans like the ankylosaurs ever rise again? Or maybe something even stranger, more powerful than anything the planet has seen before? Perhaps, but probably not while we're here. The reality is we're pushing the planet in the opposite direction. We fragment habitats, we thin out large predators, and we hunt many of the last armored animals for meat, trophies or traditional medicine. And the big, slow, heavily specialized creatures, the ones most likely to turn into living tanks, are often the first to vanish. So if a new age of armor is coming, it probably won't arrive while we're here to see it. Ironically, the creatures that once wore armor might live on more in our technology than in our ecosystems. Engineers now study turtle shells and other biological defenses to design things like flexible body armor and impact resistant materials, borrowing ideas that took millions of years of evolutionary trial and error. But evolution doesn't think in thousands of years, it works on the scale of millions. So imagine a far future, long after we have disappeared and our roads and cities have faded. A future where the planet was left to heal and recover. New forests would grow and new predators would evolve, forming new ecosystems that no human has ever seen. And somewhere in that future world, a small animal hears something move in the dark. It doesn't run. It doesn't look for an escape. Instead, it folds inwards and holds its breath. Plates beneath its skin lock together, forming a shell around its body, bracing it for impact. The animal has no idea why this works, no memory of placoderms or ankylosaurs or glyptodonts. It only knows that for now, the armor holds. And in that quiet moment, long after our own age has ended, life finds armor once again. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more like this, please feel free to like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.